Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. The lawyer who came to Jesus with this question had really one thing in mind when he asked. Not really that he wanted to know the answer to the question he asked. Rather, he wanted to test Jesus. And like this entire chapter of Matthew's Gospel, the 22nd, the Pharisees and even the Sadducees and the Herodians come to Jesus trying to trap him in his words, trying to test him with malice in their hearts, trying to get Jesus and the crowds to be against him, the religious leaders, to get him, to catch him in his words. Therefore, again, we have this question, which is the greatest commandment in the law put to Jesus to test him? And if Jesus would have answered wrongly, then the lawyer and the Pharisees would have a case against Jesus. What the Pharisee was seeking is to accuse Jesus of putting one law above another. And the Pharisees of Jesus' day had so many laws, some had even said even up to 600, in addition to the Decalogue. But Jesus, of course, notices their ploy. Jesus again, once again, answers truthfully, honestly, and godly. With reference to Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter, he quotes what is known as the Shema, at least part of it, when he says, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. Quoting from Leviticus, then, Jesus says, You shall love your neighbor as yourself. What we call the Torah, the first five books of the Old Testament, is where Jesus himself finds these words to answer his question, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Summed up with the words, love. Therefore, Paul says in Romans 13, Oh, no one anything except to love one another, for he who loves another has fulfilled the law. In the same chapter, he goes on to say, Love does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. And James writes in his epistle, If you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. You do well. But if you show partiality, you commit sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. But when we hear these words from St. James and also from Paul in Romans, it's more than just love externally shown to another. More than just nicety or thoughtfulness. But this love that God commands to be towards our neighbor is not just external, but also inside, internal. In other words, not doing things for other people in expectation of anything in return, but rather giving oneself sacrificially freely and completely, without any thought of being rewarded from that other person. When we speak of these kind of definitions for love with reference to sacrifice, giving oneself, these are things that I dare say none of us are capable of doing. Because we always have that internal desire to be thanked, to be rewarded, to be appreciated, to be given something in return for our action. 
But this is not true love. True love gives freely without any expectation in return. And this love towards neighbor is not partial. It is complete. James continues in that same chapter, the second chapter. Whoever shall, call, shall keep the whole law and yet stumble in one point, he is guilty of all. For he who said, do not commit adultery, also said, do not murder. Now if you do not commit adultery, but you do murder, you will become a transgressors of the law. Like I said, not only externally, but also internally in the heart. With reference to thoughts, desires, wants. Also to what one says. Also. This is just towards our neighbor. Just towards our neighbor. And this gets us just with those words. Because we do not love our neighbors as ourselves. And it doesn't stop there. Jesus in the same gospel, Matthew's gospel, says, Love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. Love those who you deem not worthy, not deserving of your love. In essence, that's what Jesus himself is saying. And here's where we fell, fall woefully short. Just with commandments 4 through 10. Honoring father and mother. Those in authority over us. Not murdering. Not only externally, but not hating. Not holding grudges. Not keeping ill will towards anyone. Even though we might think they deserve it. Not stealing, want, not wanting something that is someone else's. Having chaste and decent thoughts without desiring another. Or thinking that the grass is greener on the other side. Not coveting, not bearing false witness, not speaking ill of anyone, but putting the best construction on everything, regardless of what happens to you before others because of it. All these things are included with the second table of the law. Love your neighbor as yourself. And here we're just looking at the second table. What about the first table of the law where God says, sums up the first table with, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. If we don't stand up to loving our neighbors as ourselves, as God would have us. How about the very first commandment itself? You shall have no other gods before me. All the time, everywhere, in every circumstance. The second commandment, do not take his name in vain. Do you always use the Lord's name rightly? Do you always call on the name of the Lord at every moment, at every time? What about the third commandment? Not despising his word. Studying his word constantly, continually. Calling upon him in prayer, praise, and thanksgiving. Not forsaking what he says, but believing firmly what he says. To go a little bit further with this first table of the law, the summation of loving God. Hear these words of Luther. When God does according to our pleasure, we can say many such words like, I love God. He is so good to us. How well intentioned I feel towards him. He is my father. I want to love God. That's when things are going well. But when once God even sends us misfortune and adversity. We no longer consider him to be a God or Father. How easy it is when everything is going well to praise God, to give him thanks, to honor him as God. But when things don't go so well, how easy it is for us to blame God for this and for that. 
But Luther goes on to say, a true love toward God does not act this way, showing God partiality, but feels in it or feels it in the heart and says it with the mouth, Lord God, I am thy creature. Do with me as thou wilt. It is all the same to me. Remember Job, everything was taken from him. His children, his animals, much of his property. His wife even tried to get him to curse God and die. But remember those words of Job? The Lord has given, the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In his heart, one who truly loves God says, Lord God, I am your creature. Do with me as you will. It is all the same to me, for I am thine, that I know. And if it should be your will that I should die this hour or suffer some great misfortune, I should suffer it with all my heart. I shall never consider my life, honor, and goods, and whatever I have, higher and greater than your will, which shall be well-pleasing to me on my life. Do you have such love for God as this always, all the time, in every circumstance? We're all in the same boat. We hear these words of our Lord with reference to the law summed up with one word, love. Love God, love neighbor. And this is absolutely why God the Father sent His blessed Son. Because we see these words and we are convicted. Paul says in Romans chapter 3, By the deeds of the law no flesh will be justified in His sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. These are true words of God. And yes, God the Father did send His Son, Jesus Christ, because the righteousness of God apart from the law is revealed by being witnessed by the law and the prophets, those same law and the prophets, which on those two commandments, love God, love neighbor, depend. No man is justified by the law, that is, by doing in the sight of God. This is evident. For as the scripture says, the just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith, but the man who does them shall live in them. As many as the works of the law are under the curse, Paul says. For it is written, Cursed is every one that continues not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. The Pharisee who asked this question of Jesus may have been thinking that he was asking innocently enough, trying to cast Jesus in his words, but instead Jesus catches him, woefully gone awry. Because not only the first and the second commandment did he not keep, neither do we. And yet the text that follows, we heard just a few moments ago when Jesus asked the question about the Christ, whose son is he, points us in the right direction. John said, or Jesus says in John's Gospel, the 14th chapter, You believe in God, believe also in me. No, you do not keep the law as you should. You do not love God or neighbor as you should. And that's truth that we cannot deny. But upon trying to keep the law is not your hope. Your hope. And any hope that has any foundation is only on Christ Jesus, who came not to abolish the law, but to fulfill it and who has fulfilled it for you. You look at the Decalogue, the Ten Commandments. Jesus fulfilled every one for you. He completed the law, so therefore that means that God no longer counts your sin against you as you have faith in Christ Jesus who bore your sin for you. And yet, some will respond to this and say, well, if Jesus has fulfilled the law, then I do not have to do it. We can go on our merry way. But such is not the case, for though Jesus did fulfill the law for your salvation, 
He did not set aside the law for you to do with reference to your neighbor, with reference to where the Lord. Jesus' death on the cross does not nullify the law as you live in the flesh. Jesus' death on the cross for you and your salvation does not mean that you don't have to keep God's word. For only by means of God's word do you know of your salvation. Only by God's word, the incarnate word, do you have sins forgiven because of him who not only died but also rose again. Therefore, it is necessary in this life continually to be Christian and to remain Christian, not to look at your works before others or before God as meritorious, as heaven gaining. Rather, you do what God desires to do, you to do because He desires you to do it. If you already have salvation in Christ through faith, which you do, then you begin to do as God desires you to do, according to His Word. And therefore, in our confessions, the Augsburg Confession, it is stated that such faith that is such faith that justifies before God through Jesus Christ should produce good fruits and good works, and that we must do all such good works as God has commanded. But we should do them for God's sake and not place our trust in them as if thereby no merit to merit favor before God. For we receive forgiveness of sin and righteousness through faith in Christ. As Christ himself says, so you also, when you have done all that is commanded you, say we are unworthy servants. These words of our Lord are true. Quoted from Luke's Gospel, the 17th chapter. When you have done all that God has given you to do, to the best of your ability, having faith in Christ, you say, we are unworthy servants. Will we recognize our shortcomings, our failings before God and before one another? But on these shortcomings, friends, we do not stand. We stand upon Christ, whose blood covers our sins. We look to Christ who loved his neighbor freely, sacrificially, completely, without any expectation in return. You know those memorable words from John 3, God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. He gave His Son even though there would be those who would deny, refuse, and reject His grace and mercy. And yet God's love still remains. God's love is still steadfast towards you. Therefore, cling to Christ and know that His Word, His promises are true and sure, and His Word remains. He says, love Him, love neighbor as yourself. And you begin to do these things through faith in Jesus Christ.